Oh yeah. Uh, yesterday was Palm Sunday, and we were looking at uh, Jesus's entry into Jerusalem and the whole idea that people were saying, "Who is he?" as he entered the city, and just thinking about who Jesus is to us. And today we w want to read the next part of it because this is the first of our Easter week midday meditations, where we're hoping to just. Think a little bit about the life of Jesus, think a little bit about how that affects us and, you know, our response to that in this week where we culminate in the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ in our thinking. But let's continue reading from yesterday. Ye yesterday we read Matthew 21, 1 to 11, and today it's going to be from verse 12 to 17. Then Jesus went into the temple of God and drove out all those who bought and sold in the temple and overturned the tables of the money changers and the seats of those who sold doves. And he said to them, It is written, My house shall be called a house of prayer, but you have made it a den of thieves. Then the blind and the lame came to him in the temple, and he healed them. And when the chief priests and scribes saw the wonderful things that he did, and the children crying out in the temple and saying, Hosanna to the son of David, they were indignant and said to him, Do you hear what these are saying? And Jesus said to them, Yes, have you never read? Out of the mouth of babes and nursing infants you have perfected praise. Then he left them and went out of the city to Bethany and he lodged there. And Jesus has entered the city of Jerusalem. There's all the crowds outside shouting Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. And that excitement carries on into the temple. And as Jesus enters the temple, this is his house in the real sense. This is his place, the temple that is uh, dedicated to God, that later on his death, the very, in the very Holy of Holies, the curtain, the dividing curtain would be torn from top to bottom, signifying the presence of God is no longer confined just to this building. But here was God in the flesh entering into the temple, and as he looked around the court of the Gentiles, what he saw was like a market of people selling different things, even the money that you needed to buy, the sacrifice, the change your currency into the temple money and different things. But it had been turned into a marketplace. It was no longer just to help and sort of aid the worshippers and those that wanted to make sacrifices or bring things to God or worship God, but it had just become a market. And the text tells us that Jesus drove out all the merchants. He drove out the buyers, the sellers. He drove out the money changers. He drove out those that were just using it as a marketplace rather than a place of worship. And Jesus said, when he'd driven them out, he said, my house shall be called a house of prayer. And if you read in Isaiah 56, it goes on to say, for all nations. And it's interesting that the courtyard that the market would have been in was the courtyard of the Gentiles and it was effectively blocking and stopping God's house the temple being a place of prayer for all nations and Jesus does that he asserts again like Isaiah did that God's house was going to be a place of prayer for all nations where people would come and people would make their requests and their pleas and their petitions to God but, as with Jesus, there's always the those that oppose him, because as, after he had done that, the blind and the lame, it tells us, came to him, and he healed them. And instead of rejoicing, and rejoicing with the crowds outside, the temple who were crying Hosanna, and with the children who they criticise inside the temple who were shouting Hosanna to the son of David, instead of rejoicing that the the God has come into his temple. The chief priests and the scribes say, do you not hear what they're saying? They're angry with him. They're indignant. And they say, do you not hear what they're saying? Can you not stop them? And Jesus, in replying to them, quotes from Psalm, verse, Psalm 8 and about verse 2. Have you never read out of the mouth of babes and nursing infants you have perfected praise? That the very children themselves are declaring what these men these men of religion, these men who declared the word of God, these men who were supposed to know the word of God, these men who were rejecting Christ 
and would ultimately take part in his crucifixion and manipulate the situation and manipulate Pilate so that Christ would be crucified. These men didn't recognize that the Messiah had come, the King of David, the Son of David had come. And Jesus left and he went back out of the temple, he went back to Bethany and he lodged there, probably with Mary and Martha and Lazarus during the last week. And he comes in and out of uh, Jerusalem, going back to Bethany for a few days and he teaches daily in the courtyard, probably this same courtyard that he'd just cleared. And it's interesting that Jesus here was in the temple and Jesus, as he came into the temple, wanted to open up the access to the presence of God for everyone. And today, Jesus, the Bible tells us in Romans 8, Paul says it, who is he who condemns in verse 34, it is Christ who died and furthermore is also risen. Who, this is Jesus, who is even at the right hand of God, who also makes intercession for us. And again in Hebrews, in Hebrews chapter 7, verse 25, talking about Jesus, he is able to save to the uttermost those who draw near to God through him, since he always lives to make intercession for them. Today, Jesus is in the temple of heaven. He's seated at the right hand of God the Father, and he's interceding, he's praying for those who have called on him. He's praying for those who have received him. He's praying for those who are from all and every nation. He's praying for you today if you know Jesus Christ as your saviour. It's a wonderful thing. You might be alone today and you might be feeling alone even if perhaps there are others in the house or the place that you're living just now. You might be feeling alone. But the wonderful thing is that Jesus today is praying for you. He's at the right hand of the Father and he's making intercession for each one of us. And he's praying. It doesn't matter whether we come from a Jewish background or a gentle back, Gentile background. Christ, when he was alive, he cleared the temple just to emphasize that God's could be accessed by anyone, by Jew or Gentile. And I want to say to you today, don't feel that nobody's praying for you. Don't feel that you're out there on a limb. Don't feel that your situation is perhaps hopeless. Don't feel that nobody knows because Jesus knows and Jesus right now, the Bible tells us, is interceding for us. But you know, there's another temple that Jesus comes into. Uh, there's a temple in Jerusalem that he went into after the, he entered Jerusalem. There's a temple in heaven that he's in just now at the right hand of the Father, praying and interceding for us. But if you have received Jesus Christ as your Saviour, and if you've asked Christ to forgive your sin, and you've made peace with God through Jesus, and you are following Christ, and you're a Christian today, then the Bible also says, and it's in uh, 1 Corinthians 3.16, Do you not know that you are the temple of God, and the Spirit of God dwells in you? If anyone destroys the temple of God, God will destroy him. For the temple of God is holy, which temple you are. It's not just that Jesus is in the heavenly temple today praying for you, but by the Holy Spirit, Jesus is within you. The Holy Spirit brings the presence of Jesus into us and we become the temple of God, the temple of the Holy Spirit. And I, I think that's a wonderful thing, that God is with us, that not just God is with us in the sense that he was with people, the prophets and different people in the Old Testament, but God is with us in a special sense in this new age, that God is with us by he comes into us by the Holy Spirit when we invite Jesus to come into our life to forgive us and help us to live, and live for him. And because Jesus is in our life, I mean, Jesus entered my life that, that became a temple of God in the 30, on the 31st of March, 1972. And he had some cleansing to do. He had to clean out a whole lot of rubbish that was there. He had to take a lot of the stuff that I thought, a lot of the stuff that I was doing, he had to take it and get rid of it. But I wonder in this Easter week, as we approach Easter week, is there anything in our lives today that is stopping us praying? Or stopping us praying as much or as effectively as we could pray. Jesus is in your life. He's entered your life if you've received him. To as many as received him, to them he gave the power 
or the right to become children of God. And Jesus has come to live in your heart by the Holy Spirit. And today, let's ask Jesus to take away and to get rid of the rubbish in our hearts that shouldn't be there, to help us to get to a place where we can really pray. This week, as well as thinking about what Christ is saying and Christ is teaching, one of the things that we want to do is we want to spend roughly 30 minutes or longer. It's not a thing that there's no legalism about it or it can be less than 30 minutes. But it would be good if we could, as a church, as the people of God, aim to spend 30 minutes around the throne of God just now, asking God, first of all today, let's ask God to get rid of the junk, get rid of the rubbish, get rid of the things that stop us from really concentrating on God. And let's ask him to help us to live for him. To live for him in this situation with the coronavirus. To live for him in this situation where we feel perhaps anxious, where we feel perhaps uh, we don't know what the future holds. He does though. But he's in you. Christ in us, the hope of glory. We are in Christ. It's Paul's favourite phrase that we're in Christ, not just that Christ is in us. And I want to say to you today, take hope. Take hope. And as we approach Easter weekend, as we approach Good Friday and Easter Sunday, let's prepare ourselves. Let's prepare ourselves in prayer. Let's prepare ourselves today by making ourselves that temple of God. And if we've never asked Christ to come into our life, then it's very simple. Just bow your head just now and ask Jesus to forgive you. Confess that he came into this world to die for you. That he's God in the flesh and he died for you, for your sin. And ask him to come into your life to forgive you and to help you to live for him. May God bless you in Jesus' name.